Hello, everybody. Welcome to HeartMind Happy Hour. I am your host, Holly Copeland, and co-founder of HeartMind Alchemy and HeartMind Alchemy Lab. And I am super excited today for an episode I'm titled, The Future of Neural Health is Here. And we have um, three very special people um, from a company called Divergence Neuro, and we're going to get into that. We have Alex Nee, CEO uh, of Divergence Neuro. Welcome, Alex. Thank uh, you so much, Holly. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Um, pleasure to be here. Thanks. Thanks. And we have Dr. Jeff Tarrant with uh, Neuro Meditation Institute and author of the book Meditation Interventions to Rewire the Brain. He's a licensed psychologist and neurofeedback specialist and the science advisor, a science advisor for Divergence Neuro. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Nice to be here again. Yeah, really nice to be here. Uh, so happy to have you. And then last but definitely not least, we have Heather Hargraves. Hey, Heather. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> is a trauma therapist and researcher and a passionate advocate for neuro and biofeedback technologies to support clinical practice. And she's just been a real leader in this area. And I've learned so much working with her and um, have interviewed her earlier as I have Jeff. And I'm just really excited to have you here, Heather, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here with the whole team. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so we're going to talk about um, this product, Divergence Neuro, that um, is, uh, I, from my, kind of what I've seen of it, I'm really excited about it as a coach to be able to see a product that can enable me to work with clients and I want a variety of different EEG um, neurofeedback headsets and um, it, I, well, we'll get into it, but there's just nothing like this on the market. And I just think it's going to be a really huge, um, hugely useful tool to integrating neurofeedback in a new way into this arena of helping people with what we call neural health. And so, um, yeah, really, really excited. And this product is actually the brainchild of Heather Hargraves. She, she brought this together. And so I'd really, Heather, I'd like you to start uh, to start with you and to just describe, tell us how Divergence Neuro came to be. Um, so it's been a long meandering weaving path, but essentially when I came out of grad school, I was working with neurofeedback. I really liked it and I started working with it clinically. And between the time that I finished grad school and started clinical practice, I had found the Neuro Meditation Institute and I found Jeff. And I learned that the neuro meditations actually really overlined or overlapped um, with what I was doing in my graduate work and undergraduate work. So we were looking at different meditations and how they align with different mental health conditions. And that's exactly what Jeff had been doing. And then my graduate work was looking at like a psychedelic informed neurofeedback. So I went and I learned neuro meditation and you know, this interest started bubbling up the more I worked with clients and I was like, it's just not accessible. Like, how do we make this more accessible? Because it's such a useful tool, but the gap between what we're doing in the clinic, with these really expensive technologies, you know, full 19 channel EG caps, expensive software, it works really well for your Cadillac system, but it's hard to learn and it's not accessible for clients to take home easily without them meeting the clinician there. Um, then I think I was just hanging out on Facebook and a friend of mine who was a burning man said, hey, there's this guy on the playa who's got a headset, an EG headset, and it was Alex. And Alex had taken it with him to Burning Man and I immediately contacted him and we started talking and he knew nothing about neurofeedback at that time. If anything, he was doing research. Uh, the business was more towards mapping epilepsy and tracking when people are having seizures and informing neurologists. I said, oh man, but this headset would be perfect because both Jeff and I were talking about like, how can we get these headsets? How can we increase access? And in that time, we also started talking with Sarah Hill and Helium and she was developing all of this you know, VR interface stuff, looking at how can we use neurofeedback with VR, but there's still this gap in the technology existed. So when I met Alex, I was like, hey, there's this thing I'd really like to see happen. 
Um, at that point in time, he was kind of, the company was winding down. They really weren't getting the traction they wanted. So he had to go off on his journey, but we stayed friends and I continued working with Jeff and I continued doing my work. And then when the pandemic started, um, we realized that, hey, maybe now is the time to actually really consider this more deeply. So Alex approached me and said, maybe now is the time we could reboot the company and do something with it. And we did, <laughs> here we are. And I pulled Jeff in along the way. Oh, I can't hear you, Holly. Ah, thank you. Um, that's really great. And I love the Burning Man connection between the two of you. It just has this such a, you know, this is the way things work. Usually there's just these fluid, natural connections that, you know, we make at a, maybe an unexpected, usually an unexpected place that brings people together. And that's really great aspect of your story. Um, I want to back up just a little bit for people to kind of take the view because you jumped right in with you know what this does with neurofeedback and I actually want to roll back a little bit for people who may not know about neurofeedback and just give them that grounding and so maybe I'll toss it over to Jeff to just will you lay the foundation Jeff for us um, in terms of what neurofeedback is exactly and how it's used and who it helps Sure. Uh, it's a nice big question. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, neurofeedback, I think broadly speaking, is, you know, really using EEG, so uh, brain waves, uh, and measuring and monitoring them uh, as a way to understand. So, first off, to understand what's kind of happening for a particular individual. So, we know enough at this point that we can start to connect certain brainwave patterns with certain mental health concerns. So there are ways that we can do that. So from a clinical standpoint, we can kind of look at somebody's brainwave patterns and make a connection to whatever their concerns might be. Um, then from there, we can take that information and create uh, essentially programs that reward the brain for becoming more flexible. So kind of moving out of those stuck patterns, whatever it might be. So just a real simple example, like if somebody has anxiety and they happen to have a lot of fast brainwave activity and and there's probably a connection there you know we might be able to create a program a protocol that provides them feedback kind of teaches the brain to reduce that activity um, and in so doing hopefully uh, the anxiety goes away as well so neurofeedback in the short version is monitoring brainwave activity connecting that to some sort of feedback so auditory feedback or visual feedback, something that's letting them know where their brain waves are uh, in real time. So if we're wanting the, the brain waves to decrease, if there's too much of a certain thing, then as they go down, they get some sort of visual or auditory reward. And it's kind of a way of teaching the brain um, where we want it to go. And as anybody watching this is fully aware, the brain is very plastic, it's very adaptive. And if you tell it what you want, it will largely do it. <laughs> and so, uh, so that's kind of what neurofeedback is. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to engage with it. And kind of as Heather was pointing out, um, you know, usually it involves things like these loose wires. Like these guys. Uh, I'm pulling in Alex. This is what Alex does. He starts breaking out equipment. Uh, but, you know, you stick these wires on your head and connect it to a box, and then you've got the software on your computer that you can design to kind of do what you want. So most of this is done in a clinical uh, context, uh, mostly in mental health. Um, so as a way to uh, treat ADHD, anxiety, depression, PTSD, I, honestly, just about anything you can imagine from a mental health perspective can be a target for neurofeedback and again you know at least from my perspective and you know i think heather largely agrees with with my take on this is that mostly when you kind of look at somebody who's struggling with some sort of mental health concern from a brain perspective it's usually because the brain has become uh stuck in a pattern that's no longer useful but it keeps doing it and so if you can help the brain to become more flexible um, then it becomes more adaptive and you can kind of guide it into a more balanced, um, you know, way of existing. That's a great, that's a great, uh, yeah, background. And so 
it's what I, you know, just kind of to build on that. So then it would be fair to say that something like overthinking is just a stuck pattern, right? It's not an inherent condition of being a human being, but it's actually like a learned behavior. Is that right? Yeah. It's an adaptive response to your environment most often. And some individuals, you know, we're all born with temperaments. So some of us are a little bit quicker and some of us are a little bit slower, just like some of us are taller, some of us are shorter. So the quick minded people need to know how to duck. Well, slower folks need ladders, but it's when you get fixated there because your environment gets in the way of your ability to rest. And we're calling a lot of this a mental health disorder, but often it's an adaptive response and a learned behavior and the environment demanded so much repetition that that particular pathway got very strong. So we just help clients understand how to expand their repertoire, but still maintain their temperament. So their authenticity comes through a little bit more as the flexibility increases. Wow, so does that mean that something like ADHD or ADD is more of like a learned behavior than a disease? But then there are divergencies, which, you know, our company in many ways was inspired by that. Um, Janira, uh, she's, there's a book called Divergent Mind that I really like. It's about, um, I'm going to mess up her name if I try to say it, but you can Google it. And it's really written for women's mental health, but particularly for like the four main divergence that are identified. So there's highly sensitive, autism, ADHD, and sensory processing. And when someone has a divergence, it means they have an extreme strength in one area. And when the brain is pulling a lot of resources one way, then you usually get like a, a, a weakness or less of something in another area. So some individuals with autism, they're like savants, right? They have this capacity for calculating and processing, but maybe in their certain other centers that relate, well, actually they're very usually, some are quite emotional, but they're just very sensitive. And so it's hard to communicate it because it's so overwhelming. Um, highly sensitive individuals have this depth and capacity for processing, but that comes at kind of the cost of their ability to regulate emotions at times. Be, they're more open so they can process more deeply, but then they're therefore more empathetic and sensitive and get overwhelmed easily. So it's helping these individuals understand that the divergence does not mean that that's a disorder, but you can learn to have a deeper relationship with it and it also depends on the environment you're in. So some people with the ADHD, for example, out in the woods, they're great. They were the people in the tribe that would be able to identify when intruders were coming and they knew the health of everyone because they could just see this vastness, but you put them in a classroom, it's not helpful. So sometimes the way your mind works is also based on the context. And so it's kind of opening up the window of how we understand you know, a disorder yeah. versus an adaptive trait. Yeah really appreciate what you're saying because it feels like it turns on its head this idea of like people can't um you know like maybe people with adhd can't focus and they're not like fitting in the box of our western society and so we call it a disorder and i what i hear you saying is like actually they have an adaptive strength it's just we're not really this specific society that is, you know, a specific way of learning and a specific, like, we success is defined this way. It's like they don't fit in that box very well. Yeah. And then there's a curve of, you yeah. know, is it adaptive anywhere or is it still like so far divergent? So then we would say, okay, we need to rein you in a little bit, but still value that adaptive strength. Yeah. It's a really, um, appreciate that way, that alternate view of looking at these, this these different um, traits uh, that people have. Mm -hmm. um, so neurofeedback's been around since the 80s, right? And and so it's- Before that. Before Earlier, that, yeah. Yeah, at least before that. And in a clinical setting, so that kind of to be transparent, the, cl the traditional way people do it is that they go to an office, they work with somebody like, uh, you know, one of you and they do these weekly neurofeedback sessions and it's expensive. You have to travel, you have to take time. If you have a you know nine to five job, you know, negotiating all that makes it pretty difficult to access. And what it feels like is what's one of the things that's really happening here is the advent of these um, headsets like Neurosity. Uh, yeah, are changing this. They're changing what's possible, right? 
is because now all of a sudden what you're combining is these headsets that somebody can take home and it's not very expensive, but they can have this mind training, the neurofeedback training. And so we're kind of merging something that's pretty well, that's very well proven, but now with, with headsets that are widely available. That's yeah, the home gym. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> 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 so we've got the home gym for um for neurofeedback that divergence neuro is making possible is that is that kind of the, the basic yes. idea okay great and so maybe i'll turn it alex to you to just kind of say okay we've got divergence neuro stepping in as the home gym for neurofeedback is this is this the future of neuro health is, is this how you see it Absolutely, Holly. And, and uh, to your point, it's, you know, I, I, in fact, can't think of a better way to describe, you know, the product divergence and what we do here. You know, like Heather and Jeff said, you know, um, I kind of come from uh, an outsider perspective to look at all of this, you know, uh, and I'm humbled, to, just to be honest, um, how much work and how much ingenuity has already been uh, applied to this field ever since, you know, 1920s when EEG was invented. You know, like Heather mentioned, I, I had a, a prior career before founding Divergence leading an EEG tech company that was focused more on uh, epilepsy using EEG and, and as biomarkers to discover epileptic seizure onsets and, and predicting uh, seizures and that sort of stuff. So uh, I kind of know a little bit about EEG and, and you know, when she came to me about uh, neurofeedback, I was just blown away, absolutely blown away by the immense um, thoughtfulness and, and power that this kind of seemingly simple paradigm, but, but actually very, very profound, once I dig a little bit more into it, um, you, you know, it's incredible because it's really like working, uh, standing on the shoulder of giants and you're looking at um, what this stuff could do, right? Just, just by looking at, you know, uh, uh, hearing the stories from Heather and Jeff here, um, understanding how patients really transform their entire lives and, and behavior, you know, from maladaptive to well-adaptive and, and, you know, and the power of just completely non-drug-based sort of intervention and, and then habituation. Um, this stuff is so powerful. So, you know, as a techie myself, you know, I'm, I'm a developer, you know, unlike Heather and, and Jeff, I'm coming kind of from the opposite side, right? You know, uh, when somebody said just now about, you know, overthinking, I, I was laughing. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so seen, you know, and, uh, um, you know, looking at the power of the stuff and looking at, you know, where I could apply my skill set and haven't had personal um, experience and personal conviction on uh, neurofeedback when, when Heather first hooked me up in 2018 on, on her little, um, uh, you know, uh, traditional device. And I, like, she was telling me my life story. I'm like, where did you come from? You know, like, how did you know the stuff about me? Like my childhood, that's like, we've never spoken before. It's, it's kind of wild. And, uh, and I said, well, this, this is so powerful. And now, I, now I've experienced it personally. I believe it. Um, how can I help, right? So she says, well, you know, there, there's a lot to do, you know, in terms of accessibility. There's a lot to do in terms of making this stuff easy, making this stuff um, user-friendly, making this stuff affordable and, and accessible, right? Um, so a typical example, as, as everyone mentioned earlier, is, is at-home use. So it's really, really difficult to get quality neurofeedback at home. And there, there are solutions that are out there that attempted this. I think, you know, the limitations are fairly obvious in terms of the flexibility and the power to, you know, really let clinicians and therapists drive. And, and that's where our, our starting point is, is we really want to be that company that does the work to make better tools and, and really following uh, the lead of the therapist and really working with them to, to build better, um, you know, therapeutic alliance and, and therapist uh, a client relationship. And I, I strongly believe uh, in Heather's vision that, uh, you know, that that relationship is the foundation for everything. And if you ignore that relationship, um, you know, that foundation is weak. You know, there are solutions that are out there that, you know, would attempt to convince people that, you know, we can automate everything. I don't uh, necessarily believe that. I think as a tool maker, you know, my job and our job as a team is to make better tools for people. And if we, you know, if we hang on to that, we really have a solid grounding. And, and I, I would say that that's the number one mission of the entire Divergence team is, you know, really making better tools. Um, for people who are running in the forefront, like Heather and Jeff, um, in this field, right? And um, so, so, you know, I hope I kind of got to the point with my meandering, yeah. 
No, I really appreciate what you're saying. And I think this will resonate a lot with the audience of people that might be watching this, like making better tools for people. Because so many people like of the Heart Mind Alchemy Lab community are familiar with, you know, they're doing their own type of neurofeedback with Muse, for example, or Flow Time, or these, you know, consumer products that aren't very expensive, that are allowing people to do at home brain training. And that's essentially what these are. And um, so they're starting to see, wow, I actually can take charge of my own brain health using these tools without medicine. I can actually start to drive the bus on how my own brain looks. And, you know, I am not, I don't have to just deal with insomnia with pills or something else. I can actually treat it at the root, which is, you know, stress and anxiety and busy mind. And things like these cheaper headsets, not, you know, they have a really great place. They've gotten a whole bunch of people. Yeah, I mean, they've gotten a whole bunch of people into brain health and what it means to track EEG. And there's this next gen, you know, place that it feels to me like Divergence Neuro is, is positioning itself to be. And for those who don't know, like, you know, a lot of the consumer grade headsets just have a couple of sensors, you know, at the front, maybe at the back. And these new products that are coming out on the market, and you held up the Neurosity. So maybe, Alex, you want to just tell us a little bit about that one and how it compares and what, what it can do. Yeah, certainly, Holly, and uh, I'd be happy to. So we really started working with Neurosity um, uh, early last year. And, you know, um, like us, they're, they're a very innovative, very progressive company that doesn't settle for the status quo. You know, as you, you, you aptly mentioned, there has been a lot of um, products out there. You know, Muse is one of them uh, that came earlier than Neurosity, certainly. And, and I think, you know, there has been um, products created around that, but universally, we're you know from what we're hearing from the therapist community that has been using these products, there has been you know uh, certain limitations on on number of channels and sites or things like that. You know, we found that you know with the Neurosity device, um, you know the first thing that we felt was it's a very sturdy, very uh, well designed device that um, will whisper you know sort of uh, different kind of conditions or human conditions as I call it, when you use it. It's very sturdy, and the second thing is. It has eight channels that it covers uh, sort of posterior uh, and anterior kind of uh, uh, areas of your head. And you can do a lot with that, you know, uh, and, and the next gen device, which is just coming out now called the Crown, has occipital, you know, parietal occipital coverage as well. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility, right? So, and these guys, um, you know, they're a very, very kind of uh, fast moving startup. They, they innovate all the time. They don't settle for status quo. They care a lot about their customers. Um, you know, in the way that they've worked with us to really help us address these key usability points. And I think philosophically, you know, um, there's a lot of devices we can buy, but there aren't a lot of companies we see ourselves being so aligned with in terms of, you know, really emphasizing the user experience, really emphasizing, you know, how does my product make my users feel, right? It's, it's important because this is a human business at the end of the day, you know, um, if we don't feel comfortable with the device or if we don't feel great about using it or the user experience, uh, it's just not going to work. So we really like working with um, Neurosity among uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, the device vendors out there um, because of those reasons. And I think, you know, as we, you know, co-evolve these products, you know, be it with the hardware, <laughs> look at that, that's great, uh, uh, with the hardware and the software together, right? Um, it's, it ultimately is one experience that we're delivering to our users, um, you know, regardless of, of, you know, hardware or software. Um, you know, I'm happy to say that, you know, we're super aligned, uh, you know, with the Neurosity team in terms of that view. And I think that, you know, we're just getting started, really. Um, and there's, there's no end to what we can do with this, with this platform. That being said, though, you know, we are an open, you know, sort of platform. We, we do work with other, you know, hardware devices and, and you know, um, uh, vendors as well. And, and, you know, there's a lot of devices coming out and everybody has their, their strengths and their merits in, in a way that their devices specifically tailored to um, uh, kind of a certain application or a set of applications, right? So we're not, uh, yeah. 
yeah, we're 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 the, we're the kitchen, and devices are utensils. You know, we're we're just uh, creating space for therapists who are the chefs and the, you know masterminds coming in and execute a brilliant vision. And so, you know, like I said, all we do is we give them space and we give them tools uh, to play with. Awesome. Um, I want to. Uh, that's fantastic, and I want to um, direct a question over to to Jeff to ask you, so, I mean, Divergence Neuro is certainly, you know, more channels with these new devices. You're able to work with um, all kinds of conditions and it's kind of in a more traditional neurofeedback way and address that, but with much more robust. So I'd love for you to, to just address that, the kinds of things that you, that you see people being able to do. But I also really want you to address, especially for our Heart Mind Alchemy Lab community, kind of, these these tools from the meditators um kind of point of view <laughs> um and maybe if you want to take that one first you know that that would be great you know somebody who wants to you know is using meditation and wants to know if these products can be used to deepen meditation and to address conditions that they're doing meditation for busy mind you know what, whatever yeah, um, totally. And, you know, and largely that's, that's kind of my, that's my role here, or at least part of my role, because obviously Heather does a lot of that as well, right? Um, but honestly, most of my practice, I do almost zero traditional neurofeedback anymore. Uh, it's mostly neuromeditation and using neuromeditation to um, assist people in whatever it is they're trying to do. And, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I think most folks that are kind of watching this are probably at least familiar with our, our general kind of idea that, you know, different styles of, of meditation do different things in the brain. They, um, they affect different areas of the brain and um, they engage certain areas and they uh, inhibit other areas. And so in order to effectively uh, engage neurofeedback with a variety of meditation practices, you kind of have to have access to all of these different areas of the brain that are involved. And so this is one of the things where I've, I've you know, I, I agree with you that I, I think, you know, some of the um, simpler, you know, forehead devices and things like that, they, they certainly have a place. Um, and they have their limitations, which I think pretty much everybody understands. And so for me, this is what makes it really exciting with something like the Neurosity or some of the other headsets coming out is because we can actually get to, uh, you know, the the hub of the default mode network, which again, anybody that meditates and pays attention to this stuff, you know, that's, that's the thing, right? Like that's the thing you have to get access to if you really want to have, you know, even all the research, you know, there's probably five or six research articles out there that very directly look at combining neurofeedback with meditation and every single one of them are looking at the default mode network and the posterior cingulate. And so we have to get access to that. Um, that's kind of a key area. And so again, pretty excited about some of these headsets because we can do that. Um, but then you can also get access to other things like the, you know, the insula. Um, you know, of course we can't get right into the insula because it's a deeper brain structure, but we can get close enough on the surface that that activity shows up. And again, this is really important for certain kinds of meditative states, you know, that embodied state um, and uh, certain emotional states and empathy, uh, being able to access that all tie into the insula. And if you can't measure that, how do you know that that's what you're getting exactly? So the more sensors and the more flexibility we have in terms of specific brain waves, we can get much more precise. Um, and so for me, that's where I get really excited because, um, you know, being able to use something like this platform where I can send out these headsets and these protocols to the people that I'm working with and, you know, check in. I mean, we haven't even kind of talked about what the platform is really, right? You know, but it's like, you know, the ability to, for me to, to, to send you, Holly, you know, wherever you happen to be hanging out at. If you're in Wyoming or whatever, right? Like to send you a protocol and you can stick the thing on your head and run it. And then I can look on my computer and see exactly what you just did, make adjustments, uh, 
Heather's got the, the app on her phone. I lost Holly for a second. There she is. Um, you know, but to be able to see as your kind of coach, to be able to see exactly what you're doing in the moment, make little adjustments to your protocol so that it's more individualized for you and to what you're doing in your process. And, and for that to show up to you instantaneously, like that's magic, right? Um, at least from where I'm sitting. Like, so this is why I'm excited is because this is, this is what I've wanted for, you know, forever. And so, you know, thank God for Heather and Alex, um, you know, otherwise I'd still be over here banging my head against a wall. I still do that anyway, sometimes, but yeah. more. Um, you were so calling I don't know if I answered your... Sorry, you were calling me like every month. Do you know of any good, is there any good portable headsets? Is there, is there one yeah. that we can be using? <laughs> Heather was sending me stuff every week. Uh, of course, any of you that know Heather, she sends you stuff every week anyway, right? Like it's like <laughs> lots of information, but um, you know, anyway, I don't know if I answered your question, Holly, but obviously, um, you know, that's what gets me excited, right? Um, clearly, because since I'm squirming out of my seat over here, but um, <clears throat> We can't hear you, but you're not muted. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Tagline of 20 Audio um, pandemic. Uh, um, yeah, no, uh, Jeff, that's really what gets me excited too. So thank you for um, sharing that. I mean, I feel like from the realm of coaches who are working with people and clinicians and therapists who are working with people on meditation, busy brain, sleep issue. I mean, there's so many things or, or you know, or more serious issues. Um, this ability, just like you described, this ability to see what they're doing and make small adjustments uh, and sort of feed it back to them in a new program is an absolute upgrade from where we currently are with a more limited headset and um, yeah, much more limited uh, kind of remote neurofeedback options. So uh, it gets me super excited as well. Um, let's see. And so, no gel and paste. And, yeah. And, no, and so this, just to be clear, so the vision of this, maybe Heather, you want to take this one, is for this to be device, uh, for it to work with a number of different devices. You haven't yep. um, And as they come out, you could add more, right? Exactly. And the idea is too that, you know, we're, we're hoping that in time you could have like a rental place where you could, you know, work with these different headsets. Clients can use them. It depends on what I'm cooking in the kitchen. You know, I'd send the right utensils to my client and then they'd be able to swap them out over time. We'll figure out how it goes. But the idea is that we are device agnostic and we're just building a playground for self-awareness and, you know, for neuro meditation and place you can come and learn and also we're you know invite individuals over time that as they develop their own protocols you know their own recipes it's like a different kitchen that you go to and there might be there's apps that people can purchase over time so if you're not a neurofeedback therapist or a clinician is like ah, I know that prescribing this to you actually does the thing I want to do there might be some standardized stuff but the main piece is that we're shifting the way we're using technology that you don't just sit there by yourself all the time, it's a relationship. So I really like the neuro meditations and when I started working with them, it really expanded the way I was using neurofeedback. So traditional neurofeedback is done more passive. Sometimes you're playing games and you are engaging them and learning different things. But to be able to add the neuro meditations where someone's really getting a sense of the state in a prolonged way and how that state stitches together something that they're learning in a traditional practice so that they're able to continually train and choose, you know, which pathway in the brain, which muscle are you flexing? And to really distinguish that is really important because that flex that you make strengthens a certain pathway. But how else do you know, you know, if you're doing it right, unless the coach or trainer is there saying, ah, you know, just turn your hand a little bit this way. Well, that's what we get with neurofeedback. We can actually be a little more precise on how you're using your attention and then validate for that person that, yeah, this is the way it feels. And I usually frame it as emotional cardio. 
it's not comfortable always to learn a new way of being. If, you, if you're used to having a busy mind, quieting your mind can feel threatening. It can feel dangerous. It can feel uncomfortable. And if you don't have a coach or feedback saying, yeah, that discomfort is actually helping you, you grow, just like you go to the gym, the right amount of soreness means you're going to get muscles. So there is something to um, pairing them together and keeping it in relationship that encourages people to continue trying. Um, Heather, I, I'm, this may be a little bit of an out-of-box question, but I think you can, I, I'd love to ask. I got a box. Because <laughs> so, I know you're a fan of Shins and Young and his work in the awakened mind state. Um, and they're, again, kind of this sort of audience of Heart Mind Alchemy Lab. There's a lot of people who are really interested in these awakened mind states and non-dual awareness. And mm -hmm. I'm curious um, if you feel like there will be protocols that you, you know, will be able to offer on that more of awakened mind state using device, you know, using virgin Yeah, I, you know, Jeff and I, we're, it's funny because we probably a year ago, we're talking about this again. And I met Shinzen at the Awakened Futures conference and got a chance to speak with him. And as I was listening to what he was talking about, I was like, oh, we called that the apathy protocol. <laughs> I didn't even realize that that might have been some high kind of meditative state. Yeah, that time I turned off all my emotions and like literally had no thoughts or feelings or anything. And it was, it was an apathy because apathy would mean that there was a, a sense to it, but it was just, I, there's no word to describe it. Like it was ineffable um, and it had no emotional content to it yet. I was able to function and I, I spent a whole day like this. We were tinkering around with a neurofeedback protocol and clearly took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. So that's the other piece why it's important, or maybe I guess it was the right turn. I just didn't realize it. Um, why the relational piece is important. You know, going to a gym without a clinic, like a trainer the first time you might injure yourself. You can train yourself the wrong way with neurofeedback. You, I've sent myself into anxiety and I've also sent myself into shutdown, but this was novel. It was very, it was empty <laughs> to explain it. And I went home and I, I pretty much just sat there still. And I think I even went to bed because it wasn't a, much uh, motivation in me to do anything and I felt extremely I just felt spacious I guess is the best term for it because it, it wasn't a feeling and then when the feeling started to arise again I remember having this vision of like this crystal like beautiful lake with just like the sparkle starting on it like just the touch of light of emotion started coming back in it was this it was so rich it's like I hadn't had food in so long that that first taste just was so beautiful and it it filled me with a sense of gratitude and creativity and clarity and i ended up writing this really nice proposal but we never did it again because we were like whoa that was <laughs> really weird but then in further conversations with shinzen i was like i think i think we figured this out with our feedback so jeff and i had been talking about it and i, I think we're ready now that you know building divergence kind of showed up <laughs> so now that's built, I think we can get back to considering how do we bring this about in individuals and how do we support them in getting there while also still helping folks understand that this transition and moving into these states is still emotional cardio and, and you make space for processing um, and that's important to consider. I don't know, Jeff, what do you think about moving into that space? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do it. Um, you know, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I think there's a lot of directions that all of that, that this could go right. And, um, you know, including, you know, um, you know, some of the work that, you know, Heather had, you know, pioneered as well, right? Like in terms of um, mimicking, uh, you know, brainwave patterns that you see in psychedelic states, right? There's, there's a lot that can be done in this space that I think could be really powerful. You know, for me, one of the things I think that is, and this may be just a personal thing, um, but for me, I think it, it's important to consider using neurofeedback in this way as a tool um, to, like training wheels, to help you learn to navigate your own internal states and to develop the capacity for, um, for some of this uh, state existence and awareness. And to me, that's a little different than some of the technologies where it's kind of pushing your brain into a, a, a certain state. I'm not saying that's bad. Um, I'm just saying that for me, it, it, I want to be able to learn to navigate it myself. And 
to use this as a tool to to help me find that that path right it's like well here's where you need to go but i got to figure out how to go there um right like and so um i think that's the beauty of neurofeedback right is that it can really serve as that those training wheels so that you know you're learning to develop your own state and and this is where i think it's different than you know everybody gets excited about gamma for example right it's like oh my god monks have so much gamma and you know just because you blast your brain with gamma doesn't make you a monk right it's like you still have to learn how to meditate you still emergent have to... property gamma <laughs> is an emergent <laughs> property yes it helps to have gamma but if you it's emerging you're in that state <laughs> right exactly so anyway you know and again this is where i think like the technology of neurofeedback is slightly different than uh, uh, some other technologies. And again, I'm not saying the other ones are bad. It's just different in terms of thinking of the approach. Yeah, no, I really, I really appreciate that. And yeah, I think um, my own, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Jeff, and my own experience, because it feels like what neurofeedback does is it teaches you what those things feel like so you can replicate them on your own. Like you start to do it naturally, uh, you know, so you're, you're learning, right? Yeah. When I, so I've been, you know, I've had the headset and we've put quiet mind on it as like kind of the baseline. And uh, it's been really interesting and fun to put it on people's heads and let them try. And I just love how everyone's like, oh, it's like this expansive, like you can just see. And when they try to describe it, people go, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> out of your head into your body, which has an expansive feel. Your awareness expands into the space around you. You're not just inside. And I was really impressed. You know, I've played with the Muse, and this was particularly notable. You know, it's very responsive and it's very sensitive. So it's it's exciting that it's that easy because I've used it with clients. You know, after they've been seeing me for a while, putting this like full 19 channel you know headset on them, and then. I do this and they're getting a similar response. How amazing, it's exciting. Wow, yeah, that is super exciting. I have clients right now I would love to start using it with. Um, well, I, I can I can attest with my personal example. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I've always been a, you know, what had a cause a beta head and, and I, I've got a super hot singular. So, you know, coming from the, the sudden <laughs> setting where thinking is pretty much the only mode and, and there's no being without thinking. Right, um, you, you know, I went through STEM and everything else, and you know, uh, and even like uh, up till two weeks ago when we were going through the whole launch, uh, getting ready for ISNR, I was so stressed out uh, and, and and so just overthought everything, and then you know, what if this happened and that happened? You know how like running a startup just catches catches up with you, and I was so burned out without even realizing it. And Heather was like, "Hey, you know, why don't you why don't you try quiet mind? Just just put it on." For like 20 minutes, just, just I swear, you know, you're gonna feel it. it. Cause like, I, it you know, it's the, the, it's the ironic part, right? It's sort of like I, I'm so busy crafting the tools, right, uh, <laughs> on the division of these two guys, and I got stressed out. I'm like, shit, I'm building my own tools. I should really kind of try this. <laughs> Admit it, I put it on. It's exactly what Heather said. It's like it just, uh, you know, it just induces the sort of uh, somatic connection and and that embodiment, like the training wheels. Cause I don't, I don't know how to meditate. Like I. You know, when I close my eyes, I have more thoughts coming to me. So I'm, I'm one of those people. And uh, and with this stuff, it's like the experience, the sound, the, the you know, the feeling, the kind of uh, guided sort of um, um, gradual, gentle ramp up. Uh, it just takes me there. And I couldn't ex even explain it. It just it worked so well um, that I'm, I'm making it sort of a steady practice uh, for myself to, to try to do this daily. And, uh, and it's incredible. You know, uh, uh, to to uh, Jeff's point, some of these things uh, serve so well for people like me who don't know anything about meditation um, or embodiment, for that matter, um, to kind of just just gradually ramp up. And I'm like, I'm like here, right? So it's 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 incredible. Um, if you told me to, you know, close my eyes and feel my body, I, I just I wouldn't get there. You know, I just wouldn't. So so it, it is incredible. Uh, you know, especially for for people who are just um, uh, starting out. And and the, the cool part is, I don't have to physically be in, you know, Jeff or Heather's clinic and, and have wire these, you know, crazy uh, gel cap things on my head. And I could just do this for, you know, uh, um, 20 minutes a day, every day in the comfort of my home. And, and that's what creates, 
you know, the sort of habituation, right? And, and you know, small gradual increment. Um, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a convert. <laughs> hey, can I, can I jump in for a second and, and actually, um, uh, can I take over your, your interview, Holly? Of course. Um, <laughs> uh, Please. Um, actually, Alex, I, I, um, I'm wondering if you would say a few words too. One of the things that I'm also excited about with the platform is the um, assessment capability. Um, and we haven't really talked about that. And, you know, I think whether you're a coach or a therapist um, or whatever, you know, if you're using this with other people, I think that's an important aspect. I, could, would you would yeah. mind saying something? Absolutely. Yeah. No, that, I'm glad you brought it up. So, you know, aside from the actual practice itself, right, we've also created this, um, this capability of therapists driving, you know, a custom assessment. So uh, an assessment is essentially a list of questions that a therapist could craft. So, you know, anything uh, from felt sense to a degree of, you know, connectedness or rating of effectiveness or anything that, you know, the, the, the practitioner would subjectively rate their experience with. So for instance, you know, Jeff can create, you know, three questions. Hey, you know, how, how embodied did you feel? And, you know, how quiet was your mind before and after? And did you notice, any, you know, any kind of sense of uh, feeling well-being change or, you know, from a or, or level of one to five, what would you rate your well-being? So he can push that to me on his therapist dashboard in a web app. And I will, I will see that in my mobile app when I pick up a phone. And, and as soon as I'm done a practice, I can answer those questions uh, in order that Jeff wants me to. So as soon as I do that, um, the data that I provide in terms of my assessment response will go along with my, you know, um, meditation session result. So it creates this 360 view of, you know, how I respond and my subjective um, feelings or felt sense along with the um, relatively objective data that, that is sort of my threshold and where, you know, where am I in terms of my alpha, beta, gamma. Um, so it, it really just kind of rounds out the picture. And uh, we, we felt that it was really cool um, that we were able to get that all into one seamless kind of experience for, for our users to, uh, to have. That's really valuable. It, is there really valuable to have that assessment piece for sure as a coach who, yeah, working with clients in this way, it's very helpful to have that baseline and ongoing assessment. Are you able and, or does it exist now to do also Q, a type of QEG assessment using software? Yeah, so we, uh, we're, we're gradually improving the platform to include more features. So right now we can upload um, the EEG pieces, QEG pieces, and, and in the future we're incorporating more um, and analytics based on, you know, QEG phenotyping and different kinds of like connectivity um, uh, analysis tools. But what I can tell you now is, is you know, the more data we collect, um, the better some of these prediction tools will get in terms of categorizing, um, you know, deviations or differentiations from baseline and, uh, uh, you know, in characteristics that are group uh, or relatable. So uh, for instance, you know, if you're feeling a certain way that that's represented by your subjective assessment results, and you see a lot of people feeling that way after a particular biomarker in the EEG that we capture, the system is actually smart enough to build that correlation uh, and, and it would inform the therapist uh, in a way that these two things are correlated. Um, and, and the more you see that, um, the more, you know, it helps humans extrapolate patterns that are otherwise, you know, subtle and harder to see, right? So that, that's really where the power of the platform comes from. Um, like I said, you know, we're just getting started with this. The more, you know, uh, QEG bits we, we collect, the more sessions we provide, uh, the more assessment comes back, the more, the stronger our platform will grow in terms of the capability um, to, to help therapists and, and ultimately patients um, to discover their own uh, uh, patterns. So uh, I think of it as a sort of a feedback cycle uh, macroscopically, if you think about it, you, you know, the users provide the data and then that comes in the form of model, comes back to benefit the user at the end. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a cohesive ecosystem, right? Great, so lots of um, room to grow that you guys are going to be building these features in and certainly it sounds like that's all in, in your in your sort of um you know on the horizon things you're certainly thinking about and building in as fast as you can probably yeah certainly yeah it's on our roadmap yeah yeah um wonderful well so 
uh, you know, I mean, as I look at all of this, it feels, it has always felt to me like Muse and Mendy and now these new headsets, they're like democratizing mental health. They're democratizing our ability to, to really treat in the home, you know, in a, in a really new way um, from the way that it's currently done. Is that, is that how you see it, Heather? Yeah, I feel we're offering, you know, mental health is the one place where we're, we're using, you know, clinician insight, which is valuable. We're using assessments, which are valuable. But we have biometrics, you know, we have EEG and it has a long enough, a long enough history and there's enough research validating that there are specific patterns tied to different mental health concerns. So adding that objective measure just helps ground the clinician and the client in, you know, some objective data. And my experience of using a qualitative EEG with clients is they're usually really relieved. Oh. You know, it's like finding out your B12 is low and that's why your memory isn't going so great, right? You know, you, you feel like something's wrong with you and it's inside of you so nobody can really understand it. But then your doctors like take some blood work and they do an EKG or they check your lungs and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, my arm hurts, it's broken, I took an x-ray. And we do MRIs and functional MRIs and, and those show pieces, but this is just something you can have at home. And we, it's kind of in many ways, we hope a Fitbit for your brain. Let's you know, check your brain each day and you can start tracking over time how it's going, even if you're not training. And there's a lot of research, especially you know from pioneers like Jay Gunkelman and in the field where we see that prescribing medications based on EEG, you have better adherence. You know, certain classes of medication are tied to specific brain patterns. And if a doctor could just put this on their head and take a nice quick snapshot, it's less guessing, right? We take the guesswork out. We take some of the struggling that clients have to go through for six weeks. So I'm just really hoping that this adds a new layer to the current models that we already have. And it just helps stitch them together so we can be a little more precise. Yeah. Oh, it's so wonderful. I'm, I'm really... Yeah, I'm just so appreciative to, to you for kind of having the idea, bringing it forward, actually actualizing it, making it happen, bringing together the fantastic team that you have. And um, it's really, really exciting um, to see. So thank you all. And I guess, um, you know, I'm curious kind of any other thoughts or sort of parting last questions, I don't know, Alex or Jeff, that you guys want to put in here as a place to go with this, what you're excited about, or anything I didn't ask you? Well, I'll just say this, um, you know, what an incredible opportunity this has been, and, and I'm, I'm really honored and, and thankful to be here um, and get to, to, you know, do a little spill of our little adventure, and uh, it's been a long time coming. I'm just grateful to be on this journey uh, with such incredible minds and, and visionaries like, like these two here, and I'm super happy you know, to, to um, learn more in this community and, and really kind of, as I go on my own journey of embodiment and, and really kind of meditation driven, sort of a change of my own mindset as I'm building the tool, um, what an incredible, incredible time to do this, you know, as, as everything kind of just um, uh, catalyzes around us, uh, you know, more chaos. I think there's never been a time like today, uh, where this is this is super important um, for all of us to understand. So I'm, I'm super appreciative um, to to be part of this journey and, and being among such greats. Um, you know, thank you. Absolutely. Hey, Alex. Um, so if if people watching this wanted to sort of see a demo or something, like what what would be the process for them to be able to uh, you know hmm. actually see the thing? Yeah, absolutely. We're uh, we're super happy to do demos. Um, you know, we're actually working on a recorded demo as we speak. But um, you know, anybody is welcome to drop us a line. So we have a um, a form on our a contact form on our website, which is www.divergenceneuro.com. Um, you know, alternatively, um, you guys can reach out to any of us on Facebook. Or we have a Facebook page as well. So if you go on Facebook, search Divergence Neuro, um, you should be able to message, message message us directly from there as well. So, um, so yeah, we're we're happy to demo the platform 
uh, to anyone that has vested interest in it. And uh, yeah, Great. thanks. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Um, you know, and I guess I'm just gonna say with parting, kind of my parting thoughts on this is somebody who changed my brain from a very busy mind, from the sort of typical recurring thoughts um, and lived most of my life that way and thought that was normal and thought that that was the way it had to be. And through meditation, through, you know, neurofeedback tools that, you know, like the Muse was able to completely change my brain. And I, you know, I, I was, uh, I read Les Fermi's book, Open Focus Brain, you know, and just realized that, I mean, I just love, you know, that, that realization that this chronic kind of busy mind that we're in, this focused attention, thinking that that's like normal, because I always thought that was just the way it was, you know, as a student, I'm a good, I'm a straight A student, you know, I'm really good at focusing and just doing everything in this sort of task oriented focused way. And it, it's great, it, you're, you get a lot of things done if you're that kind of person. Um, so you're a very good soldier for Western society. Um, but, you know, I actually don't think that that's a very happy way to live life. And if you, <laughs> and what if, you know, where basically through the work, the meditation and the amazing meditation teachers that, that I encountered that taught me to expand my focus, to, to you know, uh, soften and learn to, you know, calm those beta brain waves and be in a restful, like actually learn to rest in open awareness. And, um, and lo and behold, just like you're saying, Jeff, it shuts off the default no, no, no mode network. You do that over time enough and all that kind of recycled thinking just kind of poof, it doesn't come up. It just doesn't come up. I mean, it's like, I really did change my brain. And I just, I'm such a champion and advocate for this and work with people because it worked so well for me. I'm just uh, so appreciative because, you know, at the base of that, it's just a happier being. I mean, it's just, I'm fundamentally so much happier. And so I guess that I just wanna part by saying, I'm such a big believer in both meditation and neurofeedback assisted meditation. Cause for me, it was my kind of gateway drug in um, where I kind of was at that point where meditation, um, I just could never quite, you know, grok it, figure it out. And so I thought I wasn't very good at it. And lo and behold, through the, you know, technology, I was, it, I just needed some help understanding what I was doing. And <laughs> wow, it works. It really works. And so like change your brain, change your life. Um, and this tool feels like it's absolutely the next generation of that. And, um, and, and, and especially for people who have like real conditions like that are really a struggle, you know, like ADHD, ADD, insomnia, autism, you know, depression, these things can be helped with neurofeedback and good clinicians. So, you know, um, just as a, I guess, an, vote of confidence for those watching who uh, are inspired to to try so thank you all for the work that you're doing i think it's amazing I, i'm really excited about this product and uh, thanks for your time for being here each of you thank you thanks, for holly. having us thank yeah. you holly thanks for having us yeah you're so welcome thank you everybody for watching we'll put links uh to the products and um Neuro Meditation Institute uh, in the uh, comments, and um, yeah, see you, see you soon, see you next week.